Okay, it would help if I turned my um, my little box on here for my microphone. So, back live streaming. I haven't done a live stream for quite a while. Obviously, been working on the bike um, in my spare time. <laughs> it's been it's been a couple of years now, um, but uh, you know that's what a um, couple of years work looks like. Not all my work, of course. It's um, uh, with the help of you know Toby Pittman. And uh, but I've been working on it solo for quite a while now, um, and it's just something I want to get get finished. It's getting really close now. I want to get this uh, unwrapped in Ryzen UV and get it across to Substance Painter, and uh, I just want to dig into some textures because I'm <laughs> I'm a little bit over um, just modeling. I just I want to do some texturing for this, but it's just been a great um, opportunity to learn how to you know to model in Blender. If you have any questions just drop them in the um in the chat and um i'm going to be doing this for about an hour today so so i'm working on um this part here now i'm not going into you know absolute minute detail with this just enough to cover the things that you can see um from you know from various angles when i do my hero shots um i don't want there to be big empty spaces but I don't want to go right in to do the minute detail because that would just be ridiculous. So this is the part of the fuel delivery system and it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's a cylinder head and you can see there's the little injector there. Um, so it sits in that hole there. There's another shot of the injector and I'm learning all about what these things are called on motorbikes. And these sort of like connect onto the top of those. So that's the, that's the plan. I've already started making it. I'm just going to hide this um, gas tank. And what I'll do is I'm just going to select the things that I want to be working on. Because I've already started with this. So I'm just going to grab these. Grab the top of the cylinder head. And... This one, this one, and this one. I think that's all I need. Okay, so that's that's what I'm working with. Um, oh no, I've actually forgotten something. Let me just bring that back. It's one thing that annoys me. When I've selected things and isolated them, and then I bring them back, it doesn't keep my selection, which is a bit annoying. I don't want that. I want these. Still obviously learning Blender. I don't know what it's been like nine months now. I don't know, has it been a year? I can't even remember now. Um, I think I just want this bit as well. And I've got the pipes. Okay, that should be it. Okay, that's what I want. Now, as you can see, from these cylinder heads look a little bit different to the actual model toby modeled the cylinder heads and it's an amazing job but obviously going in and looking at it at more detail um it is a little different from from what he modeled this is a good example here so you can see how that's where the fuel injector goes in and this is actually kind of like a you know a pill shape um and what I was given from Tobe was a little bit different. He just gave me this basically flat face with this circular, um, uh, I don't know, what's this pipe area, what do you, what do you, whatever you call it. So I had to go in and just model this little section to stick out. So I had something to stick the cylinder, um, the fuel injectors in. So it's, it isn't exact, but when you look at it from a distance and with everything else, you can't even tell. So I just didn't want to go in and remodel this whole this whole section here it just wasn't worth it because you're just not really going to see it it's just going to be hidden i just wanted something for this to sort of poke into rather than poking into thin air hey pedro <clears throat> just youtube now yeah i was on switch but um not many people joined me on switch so let's take a look at what i'm going to be working on with this, so uh, it's got these little these little connectors that hold it onto the top of the cylinder head. 
So I thought they might be fun to do. So I'll have a go at those first. So we've got, um, oh, by the way, the pipes are, are live. So I'm just using curves for that, you can see. So I've just got those in place and I'll keep them live until right, right till the very end, just in case things um, need to be moved around or shifted. Much easier to do that with a live curve than, than you know, than geometry. Okay, so let's have a look and see which way these point. So there's that little dude there. Um, I think that's part of the, what is it? It's part of the um, coolant system. So these are actually pointing away from that. So that's something to keep in mind. So that would be, let me just bring that back. So there's the, so they're pointing away from that. So they're going in that direction. All right. What I might do is just select this and this and just press H to hide these. It's another way of doing it. No, actually I won't do that. Alt H, I'll just go back to what I had. It's just easier. I will hide the gas tank though. Uh, so I'll just reselect these. And I'll just keep that just to remind me. It would be nice if there was better selection tools um, in Blender. Is that everything? Yeah, there we go. All right. So I think the best way to do this would be to use one of these. What I might do is just select that bottom face. Now I'm using Machine Tools Smart Face. Machine Tools is a free add-on. Um, so I'm just going to press 4 and that will actually make that into a separate object like that. And what I'll do is I will bring that down a bit just like this. And what I can also do, if you're going to object mode, is Alt D, just create an instance and just bring that across so I can do two at once. Should be fun. <coughs> no worries, Pedro. Yeah, if you've got any questions, just shoot, you know, fire away. I'm only going to be here for an hour. I figured I'd just do this um, Sunday morning and just stream it rather than just doing it by myself. Okay, so I select that edge. And this is the great thing about instances, right? So if I go um, E, Z, there we go. I'm going to bring that down and the other one's going to build automatically. Bring that down like that. These normals are flipped. I'll, un I'll flip them again in a moment. So I bring that down. Now, so E for extrude and X. Something like that. I think it's a smart idea when you're modeling parts in place like this. Generally, I like to model from world center because it's much easier to do symmetry and that sort of thing. But if you are modeling in, um, you know, when the object's actually in place, um, I think it's a smart idea to, um, you know, to use things like, uh, um, what are they called? Uh, instances okay so I'll just select this a for all um, and I've got it in my quick menu so I'll just flip the normals like that okay so just looking at my example so this is probably a little bit longer Gonna slide this out a bit. I can probably scale this on the Y now. So S Y. Something 
something like that. I can probably scale this one too, actually. S Y. That's looking pretty right. I might just angle it down a bit. So I'll bring this down. This is not perfect, this bike. I mean, it's not identical, but I just try to make things work as best I can. This may not be at an angle, but I just want to, I don't want to have to go in and change the angle of this thing here. That's close enough. Okay, so um, let's take a look at it again. It's got a little bit of detail there. I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just add that in. It's just a little sort of extrusion there. Reference images are so important. It kind of sticks out there. Maybe I'll do that. So let's see. How will I approach this? Might just hide this one for now. And we're going to put that extrusion in. So I might just do this. Actually, I'll do three. Now we want to do one in the middle, don't we? So what would be the best way to do this? I do that. Now it does have a hole in it, obviously, where the screw goes in. But I'll model it in, but I'm not going to leave it in there because it's just a waste because you're not going to see it. But if I was going to model it in, um, what I'm thinking about when I'm doing this, I'm thinking about this, this little extruded bit here and the best way to set the geometry up to just easily extrude that out. Um, but I do need to have geometry in place to create this hole. So it's going to undo. Stick one down the middle. Put one there. And let's see, what's a smart way to do this? Probably something like that. Something like that. I want that to be square. I'll just hold down shift and just bring that back. I'm working at in centimeters, so it's very sensitive. I can always just slide this out a bit. Oh, thanks, M M Michael. Um, yeah, I haven't done Cinema 4D tutorials for a while. <laughs> it's been since I switched to Blender. I don't. I won't be doing many Cinema 4D tutorials. I don't use Cinema 4D anymore. Um, well, I don't keep them that accurate, Q Mesher. I'm not. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it um, measurement accurate. I'm just doing it visually. Um, let me just show you something. Here's the. Um, reference folder that I have. Um, let me just find it. Here it is. So all I'm doing is just finding reference images of the bits that I'm creating. And um, just where I can, finding an orthographic image and you know, modeling it using that, but mostly it's just looking at the reference image and recreating it. So not really using any guides. Um, and there's, I've got thousands of, of images now. And it's taking forever them to, for them to redraw. But so just looking, up, looking for reference images and then using uh, Pure Ref and you know, just visualizing where things go and getting them as close as possible. So it's close enough, but it's not frame, it's not, um, you know, measurement accurate. All right, so 
I want to just put a circle in here. If I was going to put a screw, I might just move this up a bit though. Let's come back to my reference image. Yeah, it's right at the end, so that would be up here. So stick this there. And pull this up here. I like doing this live because it pressures me to come up with a solution quickly. Sometimes the solution that I come up with is not the right one. Uh, scale on the Y, S, Y. That's not going to do that. Okay, so um, medium point. Scale Y. There we go. too much. I'm trying to make this square because it just makes it easier. Um, there's a couple of ways I could do this, right? The obvious way is to you know, select these, inner extrude, um, and then use loop tools and just do a circle. So that's, that's super easy. One of the ways I used to do it in Cinema 4D was by extruding a vertice or a vertex. So you could do it this way, you could go one and uh, what is it? So it's um, keyboard shortcut for extrude vertices is control V, right? So control V, extrude vertices. I'm uh, not extrude vertices, what am I doing? Um, uh, can't even remember now. Actually, uh, bevel, not, not extrude, I'm talking about bevel. So control B, but I want to bevel the vertice, not extrude. So I'm just going to undo that. Make sure I haven't doubled it up, which I did. It's a little gotcha there. So bevel vertice, not extrude. So that's control V. and increase the width and change the shape like that. So you can actually bevel the vertices as well. And it's not perfectly circular, but you can make it circular. One, one of the things I liked about Cinema 4D is what is it would show me the n-gon lines um, and then I could just convert those n-gon lines you know, to proper edges. So I did like that in Cinema 4D. So these days, obviously that's very slow. Um, it's much faster just to do this. Much better. Scale that in, inner extrude, and delete the faces. So there's the there's the hole. Hey Bozak. No, I don't make game assets. Oh yeah, Q Mesher, you certainly learn a lot about um, the object that you're modeling. I, I know all about what things are called on these bikes now. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, a good idea about how they actually work. Okay, so obviously that one is intersecting there. So this is in a, you know, this um, cylinder head's a different height. So I'll just, we'll adjust that later. All right, I might just drop this into a subdivision surface. And let's go and auto smooth. Right click and shade smooth. Okay, what else do I want to do here? Let's go select this one, control B, and I'll just hold down the P key and just change that shape. I don't think I'll need any more than 
two there. There we go. It is rounded on the end though. So and I could probably just eyeball this. One thing I could do is just turn on proportional editing. Now this is already in sphere mode. Um, so I should be able just to just do this and just roll my mouse wheel in. I'm using my middle finger just to roll the mouse wheel. See, this is where I find this a bit limited in, in Blender. This was better in Cinema 4D. It was, it was easier to control. If I go in, if I go too far, then I'm going to distort that hole. If I don't go far enough, then I'm not going to catch those other other vertices to, to round this out. Um, and I don't think it works via selection either. Let's try that again. Now, of course, it doesn't because um, it won't work proportionally if they're all selected. So, one thing, a little trick is what you can do is just bring that out and away from that hole and then then do it like that so and then I can just take these um, I think it's sh what is it shift O to turn off proportion editing no alt O yeah what did that do okay I want to turn that off just bring that back then, like that. And this hole isn't far enough. I'll just bring that up like that, actually. That one up like that. That brings that to the end. I guess it's really late where everybody is. For me, it's it's early Sunday morning. Just press Z by accident. Just gonna leave those like that. And the bottom is curved as well, so I'll just control B this. slide those into place and if you know my modeling you'll know I like to keep things really neat notice I'm always always looking around the model as well you can see I actually have introduced a little bit of lump and bump in there so that's not it's no longer flat so always checking from different angles just to check that you've um, you've not added some lumps and bumps. Obviously I can fix that easily just by using flatten in loop tools like that. Uh, so many times, even in the last couple of days, I get people asking questions on the Discord about why isn't my geometry um, smooth? You know, why, is there, why are there these bumps? And I get the model, have a look at it, and there's all these vertices sticking out. Most of the time, your normals can be fixed just by flattening faces. There we go. So remember, we started that just by pulling off a one face from that cube. And we probably want to uh, stick a control loop in here. Like that. And we also have to bring out that um, little extrusion as well. Where is it? 
this here. It comes down to a point. That's a better one. So it comes down to a little point there. It's quite thick too. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it took me a while, David, to... Um, it took me probably a good three or four weeks. And I tell you what, I was a lot of, there was a lot of cursing while I was doing it. Um, but once I got used to it, then I started to realize, I got momentum. I started to realize how many great tools there are in Blender. And um, so once I got over that initial muscle memory problem and working out where things were, I haven't looked back. I, I do miss a couple of things from cinema. Um, but Blender is always improving and there's add-ons coming and I and it's gen generally I can do what I need to do, but there's so many things I can't do in cinema as well. <laughs> yeah, flatten, QMesher flatten is just part of loop tools. It just scales. So there's actually, um, I can talk to you a little bit more about flatten. Let me, um, let me just wreck this for a second. Uh, bring this up here, bring this down here. So that's obviously not flat, right? Um, and if I just select this section, it's going to get rid of this one. Oops. Still getting used to my shortcuts for deselecting. So I want control. There you go, shift alt control. So flatten um, is just a loop tool, and it just flattens. Um, I think it just chew, it just um, averages and flattens. It doesn't seem to be any other settings for flatten. Well, there is. There's influence. There's best fit. Um, there is normal. Yes, there are. There are a few settings for that. I generally just leave it on flatten. If I want to flatten to a specific. Um, uh, polygon face or you know or edge or vertice then I'll select that so let's just say we want to flatten um, maybe we want to flatten based on this one like that which would be a bit weird wouldn't it no we won't do that we want to flatten based on this one here right so we want to use that one's normals what I can do is just come down and choose active element and you can see how my gizmo move to that object and then I can just literally scale s on the z to zero right um, but I want to use normal so I need to go to normals like that see how that moved that gizmo try that again scale z zero and see how that flattened that out based on the normals of that active face so that's one way you could do it if you have machine tools, it just speeds that up. I can select that. Um, I can hit Y. Oh, so not machine tools, mesh machine, sorry. I don't use mesh machine much at all. I'm just starting to find a few tools that I can use with my workflow. But flatten's really good. Flatten does that automatically. So I flatten along the um, normal. I'm just rolling my mouse wheel. So I'm flattening along the normal. See how that, I'm just pointing to it, but see how that, distant point gets flattened so it's doing what we just did and I don't want to dissolve these so I'll just hit D and there you go so that does the same thing as what we just did by moving that gizmo to that face and then flattening using normals um, so it just speeds it up a little bit okay so there's a little walkthrough of flattening excellent okay Always learning, right? By the way, I do keep a um, a little sticky of like new shortcuts that I'm learning, and I put them in this little sticky. And when I when I memorize them, I take them out of a sticky. So, okay. So now we got to do this little bit. So I'm going to just stick a loop in here and slide it down because it goes kind of down to the bottom. What I'll do is I'll select these two and scale on the uh, oops, scale on the Y. But remember, I've got to change 
my pivot point to medium point and also come back to local local gonna do it now I'm, I'm at an angle now so I don't want to scale that in like that one thing I can do is I can select these two edges this is one of the things I love about blender I can come up to my transform orientations and create a custom orientation uh, unable to create all right let's see let's see what I'm doing wrong try that again unable to create orientation all right um, it's on default that's fine there we go that's working now try that again so I'll just select those two going to delete that one ah wonder why it's not making it on that one what if I choose one edge okay that's working now obviously had probably had more than I expected selected so now my gizmo is aligned to that edge so now I just select both edges and then just scale them in I love that. I love those custom orientations. They're super cool. Aligning stuff in cinema was just a pain in the ass. I kept forgetting how to do it. Mateo. Hello. Theo. Hello. <laughs> it's good to have a few people here. That's great. All right. So... What I'll probably do is just add an extra loop. Uh, i just get rid of that now. And add an extra loop up in here. And take these. And extrude. Just bring that auto smooth up to 80. There we go. And we probably just want to bring this one up a little bit. So I want to bring that up on the Z. Oh, e first. No, I don't want to do that at all. Um, I want to move that on the, so I want to press G, sorry. I tend to jump between the gizmos and the shortcuts, depending on what I'm doing. So G, okay, I've just extruded that. So undo, try that again. G, Z, and just move that up a bit. Just want to round that out a little bit. <coughs> okay. Sometimes I just find it's easier to work with the um, gizmos. There we go. What we could also do actually is just take these. I'll click just to select these and scale these on the Y. All right, so how does that look? Yeah, that's okay. Sometimes these little details are good because it just makes it look a little more interesting. So I reckon that's done. Um, is there anything else I need to do? Probably just even out these faces there like that. 
even out these like that. What I mean is I'm evening out the tension on those. How does this one look? That's pretty good. Let's bring this one back. Alt H. <coughs> hey, X-Ray. <laughs> oh, we've got 13 people. Come on, shoot the questions. Who's using Blender? What are you using to model? Are you doing sub-D modeling? Are you just dabbling in modeling? What do you... What's your level? Okay, so now that I've got that done, I'm just going to save. And I'm just going to add some thickness to this. Another little tool that I love in Blender is um, Solidify. So I'm just going to add the Solidify modifier. <laughs> That's a little bit thick, isn't it? I'm just going to bring that back. I mean, you can do this using extrusion in, in cinema, of course, but um, uh, it never is a, seems to be as predictable. So that's even thickness. That looks pretty good. And it's overlapping that now. So what I'll do, oops, is not that. What I'll do is just move it up a little bit. I'm just here. I am frigging, frigging around trying to select stuff, but just Alt Z goes into X ray mode and then I can select it. Now, got to be careful. Is it adding a bump there? No, I think it's okay. Just bring that up boop, like that. So, obviously, you want to do that before making the solidify modifier. Um, uh, before, um, what's the word? Applying it, sorry. <coughs> 3ds Max. Mm. Milg Live. Well, yeah. I mean, I basically learned most of my skills from making it look grade 11. Um, and, uh, you know, just applying them in everyday modeling now. Oh, that looks pretty good. Let's have a look and see how it looks. Um, doesn't apply that to the um, other one. That's interesting. I'll bring that up. Probably if I make it editable, it will. Um, let's have a look and see how everything looks now. So, so it's a tiny little bit, right? But see how you can see it. You can see it if I'm if I'm doing a hero shot, you know, from the side. If I don't put something in here, there's going to be a big space in there. I'm just trying to put as much of the main details in to make it feel as if the bike is, you know, complete. So we have a look at the actual engine. Obviously, Toby did the bulk of the engine. I've done. He's probably he probably did 65%. Um, I've probably done 35%. I think now. Um, but um, I'm just getting the main parts in the main tubes making sure the main things are connected um, things like this you don't see because it's, it's covered um, so that when I texture this it will look you know highly detailed but um, I don't have to go overboard with obviously polygons that you don't see because you can already see that I've got six million faces <laughs> in this model so, thanks, Mateo. But you can also see how responsive it is, right? I like this shot from the top. It looks really good from the top. It's just a happening thing. Okay, so back to this. Yeah, so just a, just a little bit of detail, right? And remember I said I was going to put the hole in, but I'm not going to actually... Um, keep it there because you don't see it. I'm going to cover that with a bolt and I'll probably go through and just check the entire model and remove a lot of holes 
because it's just um, it's just waste. Okay. All right, so I think I'll just grab this again. Grab these. See how the selections are, are lost? I'd like to be able to save my selections. There's got to be an add-on for that. There must be an add-on for that. I just haven't bothered looking. But it would seem a pretty, you know, a pretty necessary thing to be able to do. Constantly selecting the same selection seems really dumb to me. Okay, isolate that. And I did notice something on this. I think it's ready to go. So I'm just going to save again. And you can see how it's all rounded like that. But that's because I've got the solidify modifier on this. Um, just wondering if there's anything else I need to do for this. Probably not. I can probably just leave it like that. Could go and actually select. Uh, do I want to do that? No, I think it's, I think I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to put any more geometry in there. Um, so what I'll do is I'll apply this. Now, I see why I'm not applying. Let's see. Where's my other one gone? Oh, I mustn't have um, I mustn't have soloed it. So now I've got to go back and see how my selection's gone. Ah, oh, that's so annoying. Anybody knows a way around that? Please let me know. <coughs> I know I can use collections and stuff, but when you've got so many things in your model. that one okay let's try that again all right <coughs> yeah add them to a collection that's right and things are in collections look you can see look at my outliner it's freaking massive i just haven't got around to doing that and you know i don't want to have to jump over here put things in the collection <coughs> i probably should but it would be nice if it just remembered my selection. <coughs> yeah, the selection sets out on, it doesn't work with 3.1. This one here um, in, um, where is it? In Forgotten Tools. Where is it? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, because I'm not in edit mode. Yeah, selection sets. It actually crashes, 3.1. <coughs> and that's more to do with um, uh, face vertice and edge selection, but maybe there's a different one. I just want objects in um, object mode. Anyway, let's keep going. So I want to make that editable. That cinema cinema 4D talk for applying that. Oh, why can't I apply it? Why won't that apply? Anybody have any ideas why that won't apply? <coughs> yeah, it could be annoying work. <coughs> Vertex groups are pain in the ass too. All I want to do is select objects in object mode and isolate them to work on. Going and creating vertex groups and stuff is... Um, uh, yeah. Now, what my, my current problem is why won't this apply? I've got that selected. And I'm unable to apply the modifiers. <coughs> A second i'm going to delete that and see if that changes it yeah I, for some reason it's something to do it's something to do with the instance 
um, the instance is not recognizing the modifiers and when the instance is there um, it uh, won't let me apply them so that's interesting that's something I haven't come across before if I delete that and then apply them I can apply that so that doesn't seem to be very ideal <coughs> I'm, I'm, that's what I'm using, Mateo. That's exactly what I'm using. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure why. Um, I would have thought if I created an instance, it would have recognized the modifiers as well. Um, so that's a little limitation in my Blender skill. Um, hey, Daniel. I'm going to quickly save this. There's no way to actually change that. So I'm just literally going to just delete that and apply this just for now. All right, so I do need to just sharpen up these edges. So I'll just stick a loop cut in there and a loop cut in there and I do want to have one around this side as well. So if I try and put one in here, you can see how it terminates. It doesn't go all the way around, which is not good. So there's a few ways I could do this. I could, um, you know, come through and select this entire thing and then do an inner extrude. That's one way I could do it. <coughs> Just going to hide this one. So another way to do it, and this is with a paid add-on, is just to select this loop like this. And this is using um, Koshiro's uh, slide edge. I'm just going to finish selecting this. <coughs> so select that. And if I go... Um, I've got mine in a shortcut, so it's Shift Alt S, and I'm just going to slide that edge if it will do it. I'm working at very, I'm working at like centimeters, so it doesn't seem to like small amounts, and that's why I get this crazy geometry. There, there it is. I can see it now. So I can slide that edge out just like that and clone it just like that so this is um, a great little tool and this is one of the ones that was missing from Cinema 4D that I managed to get Koshiro to create which was great and that sharpens that up <coughs> now I probably could have just um, selected of course I've, I've gone the long way and done that let me just undo that I could have just selected this one and just beveled it, of course, control B and beveled it like that. Hold down P. But sometimes you're in situations where you want to add a loop like that to a face those um, to geometry like that, but you don't want to put a um, cut on both sides, a loop on both sides. <coughs> so what else we got here? I didn't select that, so I might just quickly cut that in. Actually, I'll undo that. Undo, 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 and just select all of this. Get rid of this one. Remember, doing this live is um, puts a little more pressure on you to try and come up with a solution quickly. So what I'll do is I'll just select sharp. So select 
select sharp edges like that and just change the sharpness amount and I think that's got everything I don't want this that's okay and we don't want this either get rid of that I could have done those um, using this technique it is a bit sticky out of there too see how that's not flat so I'm going to save this is where I could use <coughs> the, the selection sets if it doesn't crash this so I'm going to go new so that's a new selection set now I can deselect and I've just lost a bit of the flatness there just going to get rid of these Sometimes it's good just to get rid of the loops to make it flat and then just reintroduce them. There you go, that's better. Now I should be able to, I'm just going to save, so just in case it crashes, I should be able to just uh, come back and recall the selection. There you go. But see how I get an error? Um, this is an error in 3.1. And this hasn't been updated for ages, so it does work occasionally, but sometimes it crashes my system. Or it crashes Blender at least. So Control B, and this is the best way to do that. Just like that. And yeah, you can use, you can use a bevel modifier, of course, but I, I'm, I'm pretty confident with my bevels. I know what I want. Um, so I just do that that way. All right. It isn't perfectly round there. It's got a bit of a bump there. Um, I could, you know, grab this and then just make sure, just, you know, slide this back in a bit. It's not perfectly round. <coughs> okay so that's that little bracket and now I'd have to just bring it across to the other side that's why I use the proxy but for some reason my either it's my limited knowledge or um, it's a limitation of um, blender but it didn't seem to work with modifiers I'm sure someone will tell me about that across obviously that's intersecting I have to fix that up <coughs> hey Ahmed how you going oh we've got 20 people watching that's excellent <coughs> everyone's I, I reckon you're all real night owls because it's probably really late where you are <laughs> okay so I haven't got much longer um, what can I quickly do okay so that's got a little cap that sits underneath it so that's going to be pretty easy to do I think these need to be a little smaller. So I'm just going to grab both of these and I want to scale them, but if I scale them now, they're going to scale like that. So I need to change my pivot point to individual origins. And now if I scale them, I can scale them both down. I love that little feature as well. That's great. So bring that down and they just sit on top. Like that. Another thing I used to do in Cinema 4D was work in four views all the time. And when I first switched to Blender, it's like, oh, and I know I can. There's a shortcut for that. 
think it's control alt Q or something like that. I thought I have to work in four views, but now what I do is with middle mouse button held down, I just hold down the alt key and I snap to the different orthographic views and it's so much faster. I never use four views anymore. And my dog's barking. Okay, so I just grab this and this. Bring these down. Like that. That's looking pretty good. And we've got to put those little caps underneath. So I've already got these in place. So why don't I just <coughs> you know, basically use these. I'm going to go Shift D to duplicate. And I'm going to hide. So I might just scale one of these down like that. Grab this one. Tab. Don't need that face. So I'm going to delete that. Grab this one and just bring that up. That's pretty much all I have to do. X-ray mode is really handy. So this just, this sits like just below that, like that. And what I can do is just hide this H. It's already got that face, so I'll just do a little inner extrude there. <coughs> Obviously that's an N gone. So what I can do is actually just delete that select that and do a grid fill like that and just put a little control loop there that's pretty good now I don't need to use solidify with this all I need to do um, tab, is just extrude and just scale that whoops try that again E right mouse button and then scale that in like that and then do that now I can just add the modifier oops wrong one add the subdivision surface like that shade smooth there we go and alt H just to bring that back that's that little cap that sits below that. <clears throat> it does have a little flare on it, so what I'll do is, let's see, roll this one up a little bit, select this, and then <clears throat> extrude. Now I could, I could extrude it, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I could extrude then scale and try that again E and then S scale it out that's a good way to do that or I could extrude on the normals as well just undo I could go alt E extrude along normals and just do that okay and one side actually sticks out a little bit so I'll just grab this one and this one. I think there's a scale on the Y. That didn't work. Um, I want to move it on the Y. Uh, probably not that either. I probably want to grab these ones. This one. And this one. Oops. This one. I want to scale that outwards on the Y, so why wouldn't that do that? There we go. Wasn't on medium point. Let's bring that out. Just to it's just until it's straight. <coughs> Let's 
it's going to eyeball that and bring it forward probably to about there and I want to flatten these out so the quickest way to do that is to just select those just bring it forward and then just loop tools flatten like that okay quick save select this and that can be fairly round there so I can leave that as it is control B and just bevel that oh, where'd it go there he is I'm happy that that's rounded like that and I probably wouldn't put that into a subdivision of two obviously if you're doing a hero shot for a client that's got to be super close up then you might want to subdivide it twice but um, probably one would be plenty there now from a distance that would be fine <coughs> two a.m. Wow it doesn't seem to Theo alt D doesn't seem to I need to look into that um, how um, uh, instances work with modifiers it's just something I haven't come up against before <coughs> so that's that um, these bits are basically I'm losing my voice <coughs> excuse me <coughs> These are basically just you know, little beveled boxes. So they would probably just be better to you know, select uh, Control B and just bevel those. And then just drop them in a sub D. We've got to do them one at a time. Oh, that one did did that one. I've got to do this one as well. Like that. Just little bevel boxes like that. Shade those smooth. Just going to select that and that. And I'm going to subdivide that just to do a cut across each side ring select shift ring select subdivide so that's that starting to look good the only thing I've really got to do with this now is this bit so there's a little tube that pokes out of that that bit these um, hoses have a little bit of metal on them I don't know if I'm going to bother with that and this is a little cap that sits on top it's got these little little hooks all of that's you know pretty straightforward on this box here and this little box is basically the same as the other one so I'll just do the same thing with this one I'm going to move it down a bit control B bevel ring select ring select and right click subdivide it's got the little tube sticking out of it so I could just select it and control B bring that to there that's fine select this inner extrude circle E right mouse button bring one out actually a better thing to do first is inner extrude just to get that control loop there now E 
bring that out. It comes out about there. And I'll do that again. Oh, where'd it go? Just put one more in there and then one more. And I can go Shift R just to repeat last. Oops. I can do that, but I moved it outwards. So it repeated the move. Um, so E, and now just bring that out like that. And now just extrude these on the normals. Alt, E, bring that up like that. Don't need to sharpen all of this, just these. And one here. And this would I and then E move that back in and delete faces like that. Control B, actually no control R. And just do that and drop this into a sub D surface. There we go. So that's that. It's not quite long enough, but there'll be a pipe that sticks onto onto that. So and let's go and look at the top bit. Let's just quickly do this before we finish off. So this is, it's on the left hand side. All right. So it's over this side here. Now, I want to put a circle in there. So I'm just going to bring that like that. And Probably just do it like that. It's not square. It's got to be fairly big actually. So what I'll do, just select this edge and this edge. Thanks, Simon. So the instant you instantiate an object, it duplicates the modifiers as well, but they are not synced anymore. Oh, that's a bit of a limitation, isn't it? Thanks, Theo. So the instance has its own modifiers. Thanks. It's good to know that. I instantiated it from a single face, so you know, not I then it added the modifiers afterwards. Okay, so that's square now. So this is going to be much better for this. So we'll just select shortest path. I, this is all pretty straightforward now. Circle and yeah, yeah, I'm sure they will. Blend is changing so dramatically all the time. You know, it's improving all the time, isn't it? Um, it's going to go one there and just grab this one. I'm going to slide this back a bit. So I'll just grab this one and this one. All right, so three. Now we need to go up. So we'll just do, we'll do it an extrude, an inner extrude, but we'll go outer, okay? So check this out. So I'll go I for inner and I'll press O and that will make it an outer extrude. Okay. Now I can go E, Z, comes up a little bit. Oops, got to press Z again, just to bring it into local. That's good. Might just turn off the sub D for a moment. And that's got to be scaled up a little bit. So we'll, what we'll do is E, Z, bring that up, Z again. 
probably to about it's fairly tall to about there it's probably not big enough so i need to bring it up to about there okay so now selecting this one i want to scale that out best way to do this is just to do alt e and just extrude along the normals i'm just looking at the reference image on the other screen just like that now this is going to be hidden so i can get rid of that what i might do is i'll just press four to use machine tool smart face and just have that as a separate object uh, i'm going to move the origin to the center of the mass and just move that up that's going to be my little cap and now i can get rid of these oops delete those faces and this actually has a little lip on it so i'll just alt e again extrude along normals like that bring this down and also have to put a control cut in there so I'm getting a little faster in blender now just put a couple of control loops in here I don't have to put control loops on both sides so that's plenty that's all I need and I can probably just stick a couple in there and make make them nice and even that's good Remember, this is what we're what we're doing. I'm going to put a little hat on now. So the hat is fairly big. So I'll scale this like that, and drink a coffee. Freshly ground coffee. Hey, Rita RD. And let's make this little hat. So now the thing about this is. See, it's got these little hooks. We need to consider how these hooks are gonna, I mean, I can't see how they connect to it, so I'm just gonna connect them. But if we're doing sub-D modeling, and we're gonna put hooks in, so we're gonna put four in, this is not enough geometry to hold those hooks in and keep nice, um, smooth circle. So we need to increase the geometry of this. So probably the best thing to do is just bring it down to one and then just apply this and now we've got enough geometry to hold that in place all right so it's going to be our hat let's bring that up it's actually just as tall as that so it's pretty big scale that out and select the loop Alt clicking, E, bring that down to about there. It's probably not quite the right proportions, but you know, it's close enough. This is probably too high actually, but that's okay. Um, now I could go um, do that again. So E, bring that one down. And we'll just do the same as before. We'll go Alt E, extrude along normals, little top hat here. That's all good. And we've got to put the little hooks in as well. So let's see. I'll just put my control loops in here. Put one there, here, here. And here, might just hold down P and round these out a bit. Don't need three. Uh, I don't need three there. Let's get rid of that one. Just drop a couple of cuts in there. That looks pretty good. 
and I'll just do those little hooks. First of all, I'm going to bring this down like that, and actually going to bring all of this down. It's too big. Just using Control Plus on the keypad to add to selection. Put one in there. Ah, oh, there you go. Blend is just gone. All right, I'll just bring it back. We saved a little while ago, didn't we? So let's see if the autosave has worked. Let's bring that back. We almost got through without it crashing. Oh no, surely that couldn't be the last the last time I saved, right? So what I'll do is I'll go and using machine tools, I'm gonna to recover recover autosave. 10.54, so one minute ago. Let's give that a second to load. Ah. Sweet, sweet autosave. Okay. So basically back to where we were. What did I do? I just um, grabbed this one. I just made this a bit shorter, didn't I? So I just... What did we lose? We lost about, what, 30 seconds? Not bad. Now, I just want to point something out. We've got this loop here as a control loop, and we've got this loop here as a control loop, right? That keeps these a little sharper. But watch what happens to these loops when we go under subdivision. See how they slide? That's now there, and that's now there. And that's going to be a problem when you're texturing because you get all this stretching. So that's why you see me come in and just put an extra loop or two in here, because that evens out the tension and see how they don't slide as far now this is something to keep in mind you want to keep your you know your um, topology your geometry as even as possible usually you want to go for um, uh, you know a square as possible but that's not too bad I'm just going to bring this down like this and save just put the hooks in now so this is an auto save. I'm just going to bring this back and call this 49. <laughs> 49, hey? 49 versions. I'm just going to put these little hooks in. So we've got four. So I'll grab that one. That one. And let's just go to the top, actually. Or the bottom. Got that one, that one. And I'll turn around. Where am I? So what I'll do, I'll go... Um, Hide this. Now I can see. Okay. So we want four. What have we got here? We've got uh, we've got sixteen edges. So we we'll put one there, one there, one there, and one there. See how it's good to hide geometry. Now I can go Alt H and bring that back. But I need to deselect that as well. So um, how can I do that? Ooh. <clears throat> it wasn't an ideal way to do it. Now it's taking me longer than it should, so I'm just going to do this. Around the back, 
I think that's the other side. That one and that one. If it takes me more than a second to work out the best way to do it, or the or the the, the most logical way to do it, I'll just get on with whatever I can. I'll just use a technique that's as quick as it needs to be. What I can also do is actually hide this. That's better. All right. Tab. What have we got? Have we got the right ones? Hide this. That's a smarter way to do it. Because I'm still learning Blender, I'm still trying to find the best way to do things. There's no sense just having a way if there's a much better way. I'm always looking for smarter, faster ways to do things. Don't always choose the right way. Okay, so little hooks. So we'll extrude those on the Z. Like that. And we can bring everything back now. So tab, Alt H, tab. Now I don't want that one, so I'm going to just get rid of. Ah, oh, come on. Shift Control Alt. There we go. So got that little hook, and that will probably need to be pushed out a little bit. But what I'll do is I'll do that first. Um, so we'll go. Two, I need to select that loop. I need to select all of that. And this, oops. That's what I need. I'm going to scale this, scale this out like that. Now I did move it up a little bit. I'm just going to bring that down in line. If I want it to be exact, what I can do is just go into vertex mode, select a vertex, and just go into um, active element. And if I want to line that up exactly, I can just control snap like that. And then just change that back to medium point. Okay, so I've pulled that out a little bit now. What I might do is just select this um, and just separate this. So I just hit, hit L to select link. So I'm just going to hit uh, P and just separate that as a separate object. Now that's better. All right, so now I can just go and select. In fact, I want that. That's good. Drag. I want to be there like that. Select those. Extrude. Right mouse button scale. And Bring those up like that, something like that. And now come in and select those again. Control B. And just bevel those. But see how I needed that extra geometry to be able to accommodate those hooks? That's why I subdivided that original disk by one. Like that. So, I mean, it's not identical, but not bad. Hi, Welder.
Yeah, blender's been quite stable. I've been using this for over you know an hour and a half. Um, I wouldn't say it crashes more than cinnamon, no. I haven't switched from Substance Painter, David. Um, I still use Substance Painter, just I haven't used it lately. I like Blender materials, but I just love using Substance Painter. So I just need a little bit of thickness to this now. So the best way to do that is to add, once again, a Solidify mod Ooh, Solidify modifier. And we're talking in millimeters here now. So let's go 05. Still too much. Uh, three. Still too much. Uh, two. That's not bad. What I also need to do is just choose rim only. Only rim. even thickness and we do want to fill now if I do only rim it's not going to give me that so um, no I'll do that I'll go only rim Just seeing how much it's actually changed the shape of the object and deciding whether I want to do it this way. Um, what we could do, let's try this. We'll use a vertex group. So I'll just go control plus just to select those. I'll add a vertex group. Uh, plus, there we go. Come back and We'll choose that group. Okay, so why didn't that work? That should have worked. <laughs> oh, good. Thanks, Waldo. Uh, vertex group. Why isn't that vertex group working? Vertex groups, come on, plus. I haven't used a lot of vertex groups. Generally, when I've used them, they've been pretty good. I just presumed that Solidify's vertex group would work. Uh, maybe, got, maybe I've got to use complex. Let's try that. So I'll choose a group. Just view that. And complex ah oh, there you go so complex does work but it doesn't quite do what i what i expected battery none i think i might just do that i, I was hoping it would No, it's still, see how it's changing the size of the hat? I don't want it to do that. Um, ah, I've got to go thickness in the other direction. There we go. I was going out the wrong way. So, if we turn that off now, and choose simple and choose fill there we go all right so i got there in the end even thickness fill and i'm, I'm going to do only rim because i don't want to add all these faces on the inside it's just a waste so i'll go only rim and 
just exploring. There's a lot of Solidify I haven't used. There's a lot of stuff in there. I'm still exploring that. So that's pretty good. So what I'll do now is just apply that. We'll go apply. Just I'm going to bring that one there. And what we can do, we do need to see these spaces here. So I'll just grab, and it is actually causing a bit of a problem there. See that? It's not as even as I would have liked it. Under subdivision, it probably looks fine. Um, undo that bring my modifier back there we go where is it you see how it's poking up through that pipe as well so that's got to be modified so we'll have to come down a little bit I'm gonna to have to adjust that and Let's see if we can work this out. I don't want to add a modifier, like a solidify modifier, make it editable and then have to spend half an hour cleaning it up. And this could be because of my limited knowledge of the solidify modifier. I've still got to undo that more. Come on. There we go. faster way to do this could be without using the solidify modifier let's just turn that off and maybe just extrude these on the normals actually alt e it does have a, a little bit of doubled up geometry uh, what I can do though Just delete that. So that's not ideal either. That's a bit of a pain to have to clean up too. Undo. Maybe I'll go inside. So Alt E. I guess I could extrude. One of extrude manifold would work. Alt E. Now that's a little a little different no it's not going to work so we'll go alt e extrude along normals maybe come back the other way like that Trying to work out the fastest way to do this. See, that's, that's one way to do it. So why don't we try that? So I'll just come through here and just get rid of this. I mean, it'd be nice to work in radial symmetry, but there's only four of them. So I can just do this very quickly. I'm just trying to do it in a way that means I don't have to do too much cleanup. So what did we do? We went Alt E, extrude along normals, and just bring that out and close to that, like that. Oh, I've missed some faces. Always good to check. Try that again. 
Alt E, and I'll probably come back later and think, oh, I could have done it this way or a better way. You know, and I'll think about it and think, oh, there's a much better way to do it. But when you're modeling, especially when you're modeling under pressure to a deadline, you have to do what you, you know, what you have to do to get it done. Might bring that out a little bit more. Like that. Okay, so now I should be able to select all, merge by distance. There we go. So that was a much cleaner result than the solidify modifier gave us. And it is a good idea to learn how to be able to do these kind of things manually. Like that. And let's go and get rid of that solidify modifier. Add a subdivision surface. We've got to shade smooth and bring that up. Now they're sticking out a little bit. Let's quickly save. Yeah, I've got, I do have Dusex edge constraint. Um, and yeah. It's nice to be able to do it without without um, without add-ons. Okay, so they're sticking out a little bit, so we need to just add a couple of control loops. I'll have a look at that juju and um, see whether that helps. Okay. Now we do have to put those little inside faces in. I just select that and oh, that's going to give me a loop all the way around. Don't want to do that. So it's going to get this one, this one, and this one. Shift B to bridge. That's good. Google Drive is almost out of storage. Thanks, Google Drive. Now, I don't want to put a loop all the way through there because that's going to mess up that, right? Shift B. Yeah. The um, only reason I'm on Google Drive with this is because Toby and I share the file. This one and this one. Shift B. I only want to be on one for this. There we go. We could probably just stick a loop there, stick a loop there, and that's it. Now, are they they're square at the end? So I probably have to stick a loop there. And there, and this is obviously minute detail. Put one there. Put 
Yeah, and if I wanted to put them on these sides, obviously I've got an issue where if I go all the way up here, it's going to cut into my circle and it's going to put those bumps. So I can't do that. But what I could do, if I really wanted to, is just put one in there and then merge these. And then get rid of these. And that will sharpen that up. So if I, you know, if I wanted to. And that's without messing up that curvature. But I think that's probably overkill for this because it's so far away from where the camera is going to be. It's already probably overkill. <laughs> yeah, nice, David. Okay, so one more thing in here. Just add those loops. Bring everything back. So there's that little detail. It, it, it is sticking into there, so I'm probably going to have to adjust this. This is why I wanted to keep these live so that I can do just that. I'm going to have to, you know, make sure everything fits. This may have to come down a little bit. So yeah, it's a tiny bit of detail. Uh, but, you know, those little details really help. And I think when this um, is textured and the lighting's there, there'll be a lot of detail missing, but there'll be enough in there to really feel like, you know, the engine's, you know, all there. You can see it a bit more from that side. There's those little um, brackets. You can see it from over there as well. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, thanks. It's, um, it's coming along pretty nicely. I actually added some, just some basic blender textures to, um, I mean, it's super basic to some of the areas. And uh, that's what you get with clean modeling. You get really clean results. Beautiful. Toby did this. Looks really good. I'm looking forward to, to texturing this. It's going to be really nice. I'm thinking about putting in some kind of warehouse or something like that. Something grungy. It's a really, you know, black and chrome bike. Um, all detailed, but then in some kind of grungy environment. I think that could look good. But yeah, so there's the, the bike as it stands. Um, I think probably what I'll do next is I'll, I'll do another um, pass of the engine to see if there's nothing really important missing. I know I've got to add the horn down in here. Um, but then I'll probably go through and start putting in the wiring for the brakes, coming down from the brakes and that sort of thing. And once that's done, um, just a few little things like back faces for these mid uh, frame areas just so you can't see weird stuff you know any bolts that are missing um, just anything that's really obviously missing and then I'll go through and start unwrapping it so I'll do some recording when I'm unwrapping as well and then we'll get it into substance painter but yeah uh, thanks dude so listen, thanks for all of you who hung around. Um, this will be, um, recording is going to be on the channel. So if you want to watch it again, it'll be there. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening and I'll see you next time.